So Knit a Network was, is an effort of people who are engaged in time banking and other sharing economy work to really come together and really use our own principles of sharing and um, mutually beneficial resource exchange and co-production to make our things work better. Knit a Network is a process that started in September of 2012 originally as a 90-day challenge. Edgar Kahn, the founder of Time Banks USA, had suggested that local Time Banks all take on a 90-day challenge to conduct a project together. And we figured we could take on a 90-day challenge to really use time banking and uh, principles of co-production to create a network and uh, that could create and manage our own resources that we need as time banking practitioners. It's like a family reunion. Uh, sometimes the family is dysfunctional, but we're all feeling that we're part of the same family and she's knitting it together. And it's got its own strength and its own life. What I like about Knit a Network is um, that what we're going to find is sort of layers and layers of people pulling together. And I really think that um, Stephanie just took a sort of leap of faith in creating um, the idea of a knit -and network sort of pulling all many different threads together. What started as a 90-day challenge has stretched into a two-year project. We realized that it would be in much more than 90 days to do all this work. Um, so at the end of the first 90-day challenge, we left it that we would all continue work in small subgroups and uh, just come back together later and we realized that it was going to be a pretty organic process and we had no idea what it would look like. Then I went on a tour and started visiting a lot of different time bankers um, last summer 2013 and realized it seemed like it was time to pull people back together and really wrap up the work of Knit a Network. So we had a last 90 day challenge that was the sprint to the finish line and then we're wrapping it all up at a leadership retreat where we intend to make our work visible online and accessible to people around the world. During each 90-day challenge, we would have regularly scheduled group web meetings, usually once a month, and that would be for the whole group to check in. And then um, each work group would have other meetings, sometimes weekly, sometimes even more than weekly, just really depending on um, what people were motivated to do, number one, and would be willing to commit to, but also what uh, level of work was needed. So we had several categories of work that we took on. Um, really working toward solving some of the big picture questions about time banking, how to take the model further, how to connect it with other uh, tools and practices to really reduce the barriers to time banking and increase people's ability to overcome those barriers. And the one that you'll hear most about is the Knowledge Commons group because that's some of the largest segments of, of work that we had to take on and one of the ones that will bear the most fruit Another work group that we have is the training and peer support work group and the goal of that is to really create a large decentralized network of people who can help other time makers get going, uh, develop more successfully, integrate with different other components in the sharing economy, um, develop issue oriented projects. So we're working on that right now too and it, again it's a matter of creating those resources so people can find the people who can help them be successful. We also had a software working group and that was experimenting with how we could work on creating ways for different types of time banking software to interact with each other. That's a much harder nut to crack and the best we could do was um, identify a way that we could move forward in experimenting with that. One of the biggest things that I really have been doing most in the network and I think is really the most important is the Knowledge Commons. And the Knowledge Commons is, is a place on the web that where all sorts of information about time banking, links, videos, uh, teaching various things, documents, will be hosted. And it's going to be um, in the Community Currency Knowledge Gateway, which is, um, which is in, it's in Europe. So this is going to be a worldwide resource. And it's going to function a little bit like Wikipedia. We will be reaching out once it's set up for people to collaborate. So there's been several people in time that have worked on this, that have collected documents all over the place. Um, and these are things like other time banks, handbooks, their policies, how they've structured things, their governance, all these questions. And it's going to be set up in a way that wherever you're at, 
there's a place to look and find information. Like for me, um, the Louisville Time Bank has gotten a lot of press at various points, and time banks reach out, or people who want to start a time bank reach out to us. Mm. There's no place to go, here, go read all this. Mm -hmm. go, go see what you think. And there's, so there's going to be a lot for that. And then there's going to be sections that are more complex as time banks want to become, run programs, interface with agencies, how to get your 501c3, or even if you want your 501c3. I mean, it's not going to be, um, here's the one way to do it. A lot of it will probably uh, disagree with one another because there's time banks are as different as the people running them and the, or the communities behind them. When I heard that they wanted to work on a knowledge repository, uh, pull together vast amounts of time bank information from around the web, I thought I could help with that. And for one, I was in being an administrator and a leader of my own, one of the leaders of my own time bank, um, I had already been wandering around the web compiling my own little knowledge repository of time bank information. There are many ways of getting involved with the time bank toolkit or more broadly speaking you know, the time bank knowledge commons and there's definitely something for everybody. At the lowest level just visiting the site and just reading through the content. A second way you can help us is as you come across content you know, on the web or that's in your own time bank that you're aware of, you know, let us know about it and so we can add it to the site. Third, you can be somebody who actually signs on and gets an account and you can actually help us move content that is suggested or where we already know it is and haven't yet moved it into the time banking toolkit. Fourth, you could help us create articles. We don't want the Time Bank Toolkit to just be a collection of links to documents and webinars and PowerPoint videos, but we also want to end up writing articles that, you know, that summarize and introduce topics. I've been working on the NIN Network project, primarily working with the group um, that is trying to start a knowledge commons. Uh, it's hard to work through the computer with people, but um, it's been a good process to, for me personally as, a, as an AmeriCorps VISTA, because we work in three-year stints. Uh, so there'd be three different AmeriCorps VISTAs working on a poverty-fighting project. And we have to be able to pass on a lot of knowledge to our next VISTA and the knowledge commons is a natural place if you want someone you know if you want to pass on knowledge or information about how to run a time bank that's where you put it and so for me personally it's been really useful i mostly have been working with the um, the knowledge commons getting the you know some of the material the time bank material together sorting through it filtering through it which really was a long process <laughs> Um, you know, just verifying it, making sure that the information is correct that, you know, we're giving out to people. Because um, I think, you know, that's that's important moving forward that we don't lose, you know, touch with, you know, you know, the core values and, you know, what it really is time banking. Um, I've also been on the um, peer support and training segment of it, which has been, that's been really fun to work with too. Um, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to being able to, you know, actually fine tune some of the, um, the, the training material and, you know, just have it in an organized um, place, knowing who people can reach out to, you know, who's really good at, at certain the certain aspects of time banking because we don't all have to be good at everything, you know, as long as we have experts in the field that we can, that we know we can go to. And I think as, you know, as the time banks are growing, I mean, I know just here in Pennsylvania, they're popping up left and right and, you know, people want to start new ones and it's like, you know, being able to send them somewhere, you know, that they can get the training that they really need, you know, to be successful, I think is going to be huge. Uh, I've been involved uh, 
in a sporadic style since uh, the last conference when we first talked about this and started trying to figure out how to do it. I've tried to contribute in terms of uh, structure and and how we would look at the data and things like that and um, uh, overall management of the process, things I have a little bit of experience with. How information is structured and how you, if you're going to present it, how are you going to, you know, what do you need in order to be able to do that? Okay, so here, here's this movie, but do you tell it's, people it's something for um, beginners or something that introduces the concept to somebody who might want to write an article about it or something like that? Or, you know, they might all use different sets of terms to, to describe what they're looking for. And this gives us a way to uh, establish a basis for that sort of thing. Um, also, we get documents in in all different stages of uh, finish product or polishedness, if you will. Mm -hmm. And um, so one of the things this allows us to do is to evaluate uh, whether they need to be reviewed or worked on or uh, incorporated into a larger document or something like that, and then to be able to manage that process, which is not anything to do with the information itself. So that's uh, data structures sort of are involved with knitting all that stuff together so that you can make it work. It, in essence, I see time banking in many ways as open source. I describe it that way, just the whole movement. A lot of us share. If someone's done the work already somewhere else and if it applies to you, why would you recreate the wheel? And, and everything that everybody goes through in the process of, of individual learning and growth, you know, it's, it's, it's a great model. I think we have to do an awful lot of more collaboration over the coming years and decades if we're going to survive at all and uh, this is this is where it's happening you know on the calls there would be people that time banks that had created their own software or you know and, and a lot of times software splits us up you know of, of what type of time bank you are you know and and um, none of that matters on those calls um, and I think that's really important we're all time banking and being on those calls and you get really different types of people with different perspectives which I think really adds a lot to these and it connects all of us across the United States you know I know people now that I did not know before and I know a lot about them I mean especially in some of the calls that were more technical that's not really so much my background uh, especially like the in some of the conversations that we're talking about software and exchange and finding ways for different or looking to find ways for the different softwares to do uh, talking to each other essentially the people who would be doing most of the technical on those calls it would be more me listening and I, I became a very effective note taker for those. I believe the Time Banking Toolkit Knowledge Repository effort was very important as part of the greater effort the thing that's been really exciting about it is just how much people have stepped up because of their commitment to improving the situation for everybody in the world. Um, and it's been exciting being part of it, you know, seeing that it actually is happening. Well, best of luck to all of us. We're going to need it.